Greetings and welcome to the introduction to physical science. As we continue talking about various organic compounds and organic chemistry, today we will look at a couple of others and those are the aldehydes, ketones, carboxylic acids, and esters. So we'll take a look at these to add to our discussion that we've previously had of things like general hydrocarbons and the alcohols and ethers that were looked at previously. So let's go ahead and get started. We want to look first of all at the aldehydes and ketones. These are have a similarity in that they both contain a carbonyl group. And that is carbon and double bonded to an oxygen atom. So we have a double bond to oxygen here. And that is the functional group within the aldehydes and the ketones. In order to name these like with the others we change the suffix so the base remains the same and we change the suffix for to dash al for aldehydes and dash one for ketones and we can look a little bit about how these are done here and let's go ahead and look at a couple of uh, general setups here for an aldehyde it has the carbon double bonded with oxygen and then it will have a hydrogen on this this side of the carbon and then we'll have the remainder of the material here. So as an example CH3 CHO is an example of an aldehyde. It has the carbon and oxygen double bond here. It has the hydrogen to one side and then it has the next simplest you can have over to the other side just a carbon and three hydrogens. Now this would be called ethanol and ethanol would be remember why do where do we get the first uh, part of this well we determine that it is ethanol because it has two carbons and remember that is ethane. So two carbons if this were hydrogen all across this would be simply ethane. But we've replaced two of those hydrogens with a double bond to an oxygen atom making it an aldehyde and the name will then be ethanol with an al at the end. Now we can look at the same thing for a ketone. The functional group is given by again that same carbon oxygen double bond and then a, a hydrocarbon chain on either side. So we can look at one here as an example and it will have four carbon atoms and if you recall from our previous discussions four carbon atoms means that it would be butane. So if this had no double bond here and this was just hydrogen we would have butane. However because we have the double bond to hydrogen we now call it butanone and that would be signify it as being a ketone. Now the base underlying structure is still that of butane with the four uh, carbon atoms and the hydrogen atoms bonded to them. The difference being that that one carbon atom actually has an oxygen atom bounded to it with the double bond in place of those two hydrogen atoms. Now we can also look at the uh, carboxylic acids and esters and those are going to also have some things in common. Again they have a double bond to from a carbon to an oxygen but they have a second oxygen atom here in each case. And in the case of the carb carb uh, carboxylic acids we have uh, the a hydrogen on one side just a hydrogen on one side so the second oxygen atom is bonded to a hydrogen atom so instead of having a carbon chain here it's at the very end and the oxygen atom then binds to that last hydrogen atom that is needed in an ester the second ox oxygen atom is bonded to another carbon atom. So that oxygen atom has a carbon on either side. So that's the difference between the two. One is bonded to a carbon and a hydrogen. The second is bonded to two different carbon atoms. And we can look at some of these and how, what they are called. So this is ethanoic acid for the uh, carboxylic carboxylic acid that is present here. This is an example of acetic acid. Uh, the methyl acetate or methyl ethanoate. Again, we look at when we're looking at which ones are present here, we are going to look at the carbon chains again. So ethane would have been two carbons. So this is going to be an ethane base. That's where we get the ethanoic acid. 
In this case, we have a methane group on one side and a uh, ethanol group on the other side, two carbons on one, one carbon on the other. So we have methyl ethanoate. So that's simply because we have the two. We have two different chains. You're going to get the name for both of those two. Now, when we look at the esters, esters are actually generally associated with different scents. So we see a number of them here in kind of a sketch version. But raspberry, apple, pineapple, rum, peach, orange, wintergreen, honey, and strawberry are all examples of these esters. These allow for scents because they very easily vaporize. They have a very low vapor pressure. And that's because there are no hydrogen bonds between the molecules. So that gives them the very strong scents that we're used to for some of these different fruits and other materials. Now, as we finish up here, let's go ahead and just kind of discuss a little bit about what we've looked at here. And the simplest of the acids is HCO, CO2, H, which would be formic acid. That would be the simplest because it simply has one carbon atom. Now, formic acid you may be familiar with because that is what causes the pain and irritation from stings of different insects like ants and wasps. A little more a complex acid with two carbon atoms here would be acetic acid, which is used in vinegar. And then we looked at some of those esters with the flowers, perfumes and fruits, which is the aroma of those is because of the, the esters that are present within them. And again, those esters vaporize very easily, meaning they go off into the atmosphere and we can then smell those and we we determine those as scents. So let's go ahead and finish up this section with our summary. And what we've looked at this time, we looked at the aldehydes and ketones. And these contain a functional group with a double bond between carbon and oxygen. Their carboxylic acids and esters contain a carbonyl group with a second oxygen atom bonded. So it had that same oxygen, carbon oxygen double bond. But in this case, they had a second bond here, which could have been an H, for example, for uh, the uh, carboxylic acids and would have been another carbon group uh, for the esters. And we talked about esters and how they are responsible for many of the scents with which we are familiar. And we looked at a few examples of those. So that concludes this lecture on aldehydes, ketones, carboxylic acids, and esters. We'll be back again next time for another topic in physical science. So until then, have a great day everyone, and I will see you in class.